Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video I'm going to talk about what is DLNA. Uh, quite a few of you have asked me uh, because whenever I uh, generally uh, review products related to media or something I uh, mention about DLNA and quite a few of you ask me what is this DLNA and how it is useful. The full form of DLNA is Digital Living Network Alliance. That doesn't make sense. But DLNA is a very simple concept that makes our lives very easy. Let me explain you uh, why this DLNA was actually formed. Uh, let's go back about 10 years ago uh, when uh, you would need to consume your media like let's say you want to listen to music. You would put a CD in a CD player and you would listen to that. But now moving uh, to let's say 2004 and 2005 people started moving to digital era. People were ripping uh, music and converting their CDs to MP3. Similarly, the th same thing was happening with movies. And uh, a lot of people started storing their digital media on a computer or on a server. And a lot of companies started realizing that uh, people might like to watch the content that's not stored on that device. For example, uh, let's say you want to watch a movie. It might be sitting on your computer, but you would like to watch it on your television that is in another room. So. Uh, there was a need for a standard by which each device could talk to another and thus DLNA was formed. Actually DLNA initiative was formed by Sony if I'm not wrong and it started in 2003. Now as of 2011 about roughly about 9000 uh, devices support this DLNA standard and the DLNA makes our lives very easy. For example, I'll actually show you how I use DLNA in my digital environment to basically stream media from one device to another. Uh, for DLNA to work, you need uh, two things. You need a DLNA, some some sort of a server, uh, basically called as a DLNA server, and you need a DLNA enabled device. That's generally a receiver or a controller. Uh, so, and it's not that only one device can communicate to another DLNA uh, device. Let's say you have a DLNA server, it can communicate to, let's say, n number of DLNA uh, devices based upon your network. And don't get scared that you need a very high-end uh, server uh, for a DLNA server or something. In fact, on Windows, uh, the built-in uh, Windows Media Player has built-in support for DLNA. And you can get even third-party softwares like uh, Twonky Media, etc. for free, which have a DLNA server. Also, if you're using something like a NAS or something like that, it might have a DLNA server. For example, I am using a Synology NAS and it has a built-in DLNA server. So, uh, you need a server and a client for it to work. Another thing I wanted to point out is that for DLNA to work, you need some kind of a network. It can be a wired network or it can be a wireless network. So essentially for using a DLNA in your home environment, you need a network. You can use any ordinary router, it doesn't matter and you, it, your, your DLNA devices can be connected via wired Ethernet or wirelessly. I personally am using all my DLNA devices via wirelessly and it works great. Uh, so let me give you an example. Let's say that you have some uh, movies uh, on your computer and let's say your television is in another room that's in your living room. What would you do traditionally do? To watch those movies you might uh, take a pen drive, load those movies on the pen drive and then go to your TV and that might have a media player or something like that and insert that uh, pen drive and watch that movie. Uh, this is how traditionally you would do but if you had a DLNA device and you had a network what would have happened is that with the DLNA enabled uh, the client you could have easily browsed all the movies that are available on your PC directly on the TV and you just click on the same and you can watch that movie. You don't have to worry about how it works and the networking about it because these DLNA devices communicate with each other. So it's really easy to set it up. Actually, you don't need to set up anything. They actually find the other DLNA devices automatically. And uh, that way you can easily stream that content that you have on your computer to other DLNA enabled devices like televisions, let's say your uh, music system to uh, listen to music, etc. Uh, I have been using this DLNA for quite some time and almost all my media related devices have DLNA functionality. I use uh, basically uh, DLNA to stream my videos and also uh, I listen to the music via that. For my DLNA server, personally I'm using a Synology NAS that has a built-in DLNA server 
and for my DLNA clients, uh, I have a WD TV connected to my television. That's in another room. Also, many of the new Android phones have DLNA support. So you can actually uh, list all the content that you have on a DLNA server, for example, movies, music, etc. on your Android phone and watch the same. You don't need to copy all that content on your phone. And the other interesting thing that you can do uh, via this that I have figured out is that uh, you can actually use this uh, Android uh, DLNA enabled phone as a remote control device for your other DLNA devices. For example, I have done recently something like this. Uh, as I have said, my media is on my Synology NAS and I uh, list all that, uh, all the music, etc. on my phone. And instead of playing that music on this phone, I send that music to my home theater. And this is also possible with a DLNA device. So by sitting in any room, I can remotely control what music is uh, being played on my home theater. So all this is possible just because of DLNA support. So in a nutshell, DLNA makes a life really easy. So I personally like DLNA enabled devices because it makes a life really easy. And uh, whenever I'm shopping for new audio video equipment, I make sure that they are DLNA compliant. I hope you found this video uh, useful. If you found it useful, I'll appreciate if you click on the like button given below. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.